today's Big Bang. Build your own automatic bubble blowing machine. Meet the French man who worked out how to stop food from rotting. Four. And play a tune on a pop bottle. Welcome to the Big Bang. Right, as always, here's a puzzle for you. A ping pong ball and a plastic beaker. Is it possible to drop the beaker so the ping pong ball leaps into the air? Gary? Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? we? Just put that sponge there. Hang on, is that part of the trick? No, actually, it's just to protect the table. And to stop me from smashing the tumbler, probably. Right, here we go. Two, three, four. Huh. OK, it didn't exactly leap out. Well, it can be done. Have a think about it. And you have a think about it. And I'll reveal the secret at the end of the show. Here you go. More bubbles. Less effort. Do you like my automatic bubble making machine? It works rather like a windmill. I've got an electric fan over here providing the breeze, which is actually turning the sails of my windmill, dipping these wire loops into the bubble mixture, and then the breeze blows the bubbles. And it's not difficult to make. The main body is actually just a pot bottle glued to a crisp tube, like this. And then the whole thing is mounted on a good stiff piece of card and the cardboard bits are covered in sticky back plastic to make it waterproof. Now, to make the sails, you'll need a piece of card that is about four centimetres across, cut into a circle, and four lolly sticks glued in place, like this. Now, the blades for the sails, this is a really clever bit. Take a plastic milk bottle and mark out that sort of shape. Make sure that your shape goes just over the edge because when you cut it out, it gives you that crucial shape that makes the blades work perfectly. And simply glue them in position on all four of the lolly sticks. Now, you need to make your bubbles and the best way to make bubbles is with a wire loop which is actually made from garden wire. Glue them in position on the end of your four lolly sticks. Now it's time to assemble things. So, you'll need a paper clip. Cut it and bend it till you've got something that looks like that. Then thread that through the top of the bottle that you use for the main body. And it goes. Cut a small piece of card into a round shape with a hole in the middle. Then you take the whole assembly like that and slide that on. Then another washer, again a bit of card with a hole in the middle. And finally, a bead on the end and bend the paper clip so it's tight and then check that your finished assembly spins nice and freely. Then it's just a matter of taking this bit and screwing the bottle top in position on the bottle and the whole thing is complete. Now, the bubble mixture sits in a garden tray. You can get that from any good garden centre. And here's a good tip on bubble mixture use a full bottle of washing up liquid, then top it up to the brim with water. Then all you have to do is apply wind. It takes a couple of seconds for it to start spinning, but then produces tremendous bubbles. Don't worry if you missed anything, by the way. All the details on how to make your own automatic bubble machine are on the Big Bang website. Problems with your pet crocodile, Ernest? Looks a bit of a handful, Cynthia. Here are two things about crocodiles. Can you tell which one is the big fib? Fact or fib? When crocodiles have problems with their teeth, they sort out their denture difficulties with a handful of rocks. Grinding a mouthful of rocks helps to sharpen and strengthen their teeth. Fact or fib? Crocodiles may have huge jaws that can devour a human, but can they do this? No, they can't. Crocodiles can't stick their tongues out. It's just impossible for them. So, which is the big fib? Make your choice now. 
Well, crocodiles can't stick their tongues out, so the big fibber is earnest. Yeah. Crocodiles don't eat rocks to sharpen their teeth, but they do swallow small stones. Why? Because stones in their stomach help them to digest their food. Excuse you. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to make solid objects disappear. No, you can't make things disappear. You, the heckler, step this way. Now, sir, what's your name? Gareth. OK, Gareth, are you prepared to put your money where your mouth is? Yeah. Well, then, give us some money okay. and I'll make it disappear. It's tempe. OK, please lay it in my card. Yeah. And then I will close the card and I will throw it away. Hey, oh. hey, where's my money gone? Oh. Hey, you're giving me money back. Don't tell Gareth, but his money is there. You see, it's an old trick called the milkman's wallet, and the wallet is double hinged. So if I open it the other side, the money's gone, or it looks like it's gone. It's actually underneath that black ribbon. To make one, you need four rectangles of card, a thick bit of ribbon, and two thin bits of ribbon. Get the thick bit of ribbon and stick it to the card like that. And the same with the other bit of card and the two thin bits of ribbon either side. Then bring it over and stick it underneath. I'm using double-sided tape, but you can use glue if you want. That goes there. And then finally, tidy it up by sticking the other bits of cardboard on the back and you've got your wallet. Try it on your friends. Get them to put some money in one side, then close it and secretly turn it over so when you open it up, their money's disappeared. But remember, don't tell Gareth. I heard that! <laughs> Here you go, sir. One veggie breakfast. Uh, waitress? What's this horrible green stuff? That'll be the baked beans, sir. Yeah, but it's disgusting. They've gone off. Oh, yeah, that's awful. You know what, sir? You think they've never heard of bottled food? Bottled food? Oh, yes, sir. That was a very big idea. It all started with a bloke called Nicholas Appert. Hello. Matelot of eel avec veal, avec sweetbreads in an anchovy sauce. Nicolas Appert was a French cook and he loved his oh, food. Delicious. And he loved his country. Vive la France! Now, the big cheese in France at this time was a bloke called Napoleon Bonaparte. He was a great general, but he had a problem. Vive la France! Our soldiers, they go away to war and they are all starving. The problem is they cannot take a lovely French food with them because it goes all green and horrible. I will give 12,000 francs to the person who finds a way to keep our lovely French food fresh. As well as being patriotic, Appert was also quite fond of money. He decided to solve Napoleon's problem. The traditional way to preserve food was to smoke it, dry it or pickle it. Oh. These foods are disgusting. Not even the English would eat food as horrible as this. Well, never mind. I have a better way. First, I prepare the food very carefully and then place the food within these glass jars. Then I seal them very tightly. Now, this is the cunning bit. I then take the glass jar and boil it in hot water for a very, very long time. Now, I think this removes all the air, which stops the food from going rotten. A pear experiment. For years, he tried different containers, different seals, heating the food to higher temperatures. But the one thing that kept him going was his dream of winning Napoleon's prize. Me, the cash. All those lovely francs. After 14 years of testing, a pair heard from Napoleon again. But there was good news and bad news. He would get the prize if he wrote all his experiments up in a book for everyone to use. 
And finally, a pear was given the money he'd worked so hard for. Oh! Thanks for the francs. Thanks to Appair's big idea, we now get fresh food all year round. Though nowadays we don't use bottles, we use cans. But it was only later, when people learned about microscopic bacteria, that anyone understood how a pear system worked. Great invention. So, where's the um, can opener? Ah, now that wasn't invented for another 50 years. <laughs> Pretty, isn't it? It's called an ocarina and it's a very simple design. You can make a wind instrument from any container. All you need is the right mechanism and here it is. It's a straw. Come on, I'll show you. In fact, you don't even need all of the straw. You just need a small part with these bendy straws. You just need the bit up to the bend. Now you need a container. I'm using a crisp tube. I've cut it down so it's short and stumpy and put a disc of cardboard on top and cut a slot in it. What you do is you line your straw up with the top of that slot and using some sticky tape, tape it in place. Now it's important to flatten the straw a bit where you tape it, but make sure the air can still get through. Then... Not bad, I could spend a bit more time fiddling with it to get a better note. Now, the way it works is that you blow the air through the straw, the air you're blowing hits this edge and splits, and part of the air goes inside the container and sets the air in there vibrating, and that's what gives you the note. And you can get different notes by making different containers into instruments. The smaller instruments make higher sounds, and the bigger ones make lower sounds, like this poster tube. <laughs> That's gorgeous. But if you want to make different notes on one instrument, you need to make holes in it. Now, you can do this quite easily with all the instruments we've got here. They just punch the holes in. And this one sounds a bit like a recorder. OK, I was never very good at record lessons at school, but I'm not bad at the ocarina. This is another real ocarina that I've got. Now, I've made an ocarina that sounds exactly like that, and I've made it from a pop bottle. Listen to this. Get your pop bottle, put on the straw mechanism with the hole underneath it, and then punch in some holes of different sizes. You need to space the holes around the instrument, and the different notes come from the different sizes of holes. Experiment to find ones that work, and it can be a bit tricky. So check out the Big Bang website, where we give you some tips. Have you worked out the answer to Violet's puzzle, the one she set at the start of today's Big Bang? She reckons it's possible to put a ping pong ball in a tumbler and drop it onto the table in such a way that the ping pong ball leaps up into the air. I reckon I've sussed it out. Watch this. If the ping pong ball bounces as the tumbler's falling... Hey! Yes! Excellent! So, uh, do I win? Uh, not quite. That's a dry way, but there is a wet way. A wet Give it way? Here, yeah. This what I have you to do... see is you pour a bit of water into the glass, just a little bit. Then, watch this, whirl it round and... Hey! <laughs> Here, you have a go. What happened there, then? What you do is you swirl the water round so the ping pong ball stays in the middle. That makes it nice and stable. Then when you drop it, the, <laughs> whoo, the water sloshes and there's a big wave in the middle which pushes it up. Go on, have another go. That is fantastic. If you like that puzzle, there are plenty more on the Big Bang website. <laughs> as well as details of everything that we've made in today's show. That's it for now. We'll see you next time on The, the big, big Bang. Bang. I am so... In the next Big Bang, prepare to be pied. Launch these fantastic gliders. And send your brain scatty with the best kaleidoscope ever.